Well, you're most welcome to this talk, and I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Chess Crosby from Newfoundland in Canada. Chess, welcome and thank you for coming on, on the video. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Dr. Campbell, for uh, giving your international uh, viewers, and Canadians in particular, a chance to get some insight into what's been going on in Canada in terms of the inquiry we've had, which is not a government inquiry. It's purely a citizen-led and citizen-funded inquiry into the government response to COVID-19. And we just released an interim report uh, that uh, I think intrigues you. Yeah, well, in fact, we have that in front of us here, don't we? Um, this national citizens inquiry, but, but surely it's the job of governments to do inquiries into pandemics and things. Why, why have uh, a group of concerned Canadian citizens considered this necessary to take on? Uh, as a responsibility of their own. Well, John, I think you're absolutely right. Most citizens of any reasonably advanced country, democratic country, would think that uh, when something very uh, challenging occurs, uh, that the governments would want to do a look back into it and learn lessons for the future so they can avoid the same thing happening in the future and so on. But in this country, Canada, we have 11 uh, provinces, sorry, we have 10 provinces and a federal jurisdiction uh, and some territories, none of whom want to do a look back, none of whom want to do an official inquiry into uh, what lessons they can learn from the past. They don't want to do, they don't want to be learning any lessons. So a group of citizens got together and we decided that we would have to do it. Indeed, and uh, th I think you've released this report a as an interim report now. Um, I assume that this might have something to do with the fact that the Canadian government has basically, as I read their guidelines from Health Canada, uh, recommended the COVID vaccine boosters for everyone over the age of six months in the country. Is, th is that your understanding, Chess? Yes, well, uh, just to take a step back, the commissioners heard from hundreds of witnesses starting in March and finished up in uh, May. Uh, it's a big undertaking to write the uh, report up, uh, but they were very troubled by what they learned along the way about the nature of the approval process uh, and what was approved when the vaccines were placed on the market going back almost three years ago and what has and has not happened with respect to safety and efficacy approval ever since. And they were so disturbed by it they, that they thought they should put out an interim report in advance of Parliament sitting and resuming sitting, the Canadian Parliament, uh, which it is doing this week. And the nature of that report was to bring attention to the fact that when Health Canada, our regulator, approved the COVID-19 vaccines, uh, they did not apply the traditional test for safety and effectiveness or any kind of risk-benefit test, which is an objective one that they normally apply. Uh, rather, they, uh, they applied no safety test whatsoever. Now, I want to emphasize this is not uh, an opinion on an issue of whether or not as a matter of scientific fact, scientific study, uh, the vaccines are safe or not safe or effective or not effective. It's simply the question of what did the regulator approve and what test did they apply? And they did not apply a safety test. Now, the reason why that's important is most Canadians, the vast majority, and in fact, our courts up to a high level, are under the misimpression that there was some kind of safety determination made by the regulator charged with protecting our health and safety. But that did not occur, and it still has not occurred. And it has not occurred with respect to the boosters, which are being currently rolled out, including for children. And Canadians need to know that if they're going to give informed consent to getting these vaccines. So, the original approval for the vaccine was presumably some sort of an emergency use authorization, similar to 
my country and the United States. But that hasn't been transformed into a, into a permanent uh, approval process, as would be normal with other vaccines and drugs. Uh, well, you're 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 accurate in that we didn't have what you call an emergency use authorization process per se. What uh, what they did in the federal government, the health department under the Trudeau government, is they first of all implemented a interim um, order, order in council, and uh, seven months later they replaced that with a regulation. And neither of those statutory instruments, which anybody can look at for themselves, apply or purport to apply any form of test for safety or effectiveness or any kind of risk-benefit analysis. They, uh, the, the, the interim order just basically compelled the Minister of Health to approve the vaccines, and there has been no analysis, no determination made by Health Canada about safety issues ever since. I'm not taking a position here. Uh, let me emphasize on whether or not, in fact, these drugs are safe. It's simply they have never been adjudicated by the regulator to be safe. And it seems that they want to continue on with this kind of approval process, which abrogates the traditional objective safety test for all future mRNA products. So it's as if we've got one safety criteria for all the vaccines in Canada, all the drugs in Canada, and a completely separate set of not very transparent criteria, I think it would have to be said, for mRNA vaccines. It just seems a rather anomalous situation, really, doesn't it? Yeah, anomalous would be one way to describe it. Uh, the alarming thing, though, is they've done that but they represent something different on their website because on the Health Canada website, even today, the words proven, safe and effective and of good quality appear. And this is not what they have done. So the Canadian people and Canadian courts, in fact, are being misled by this. It's probably completely unfair to ask you this question, but why is this just incompetence or is this some, is this part of a pattern of behavior? What, what is going on here? Uh, well, John, you know, I probably have opinions of my own, but I'm going to let the Canadians and your viewers arrive at their own conclusions about what's motivating this. It's, it's often difficult to tell the difference between something being a result of incompetence something being the result of intent. But at some point, the inference becomes pretty strong that there's intent. I appreciate that answer. You're just giving the facts. We don't know the machinations uh, of what's going on, really. Um, the, in my country, we have the, the, what's called the yellow card system for reporting adverse events, and there's the vaccine uh, adverse events reporting system in the States. Um, how, how are adverse reactions of drugs and vaccines reported in Canada? Do you have a similar national system or does it go by province from to province to province? Uh, no, there's a similar uh, national system. But one of the things we heard evidence from during the, the months we were hearing from uh, lay people and experts, we heard from a bunch of doctors, a lot of doctors, practitioners in various Canadian provinces, and the system that we have for reporting adverse events from vaccines was very challenging to use, very time consuming. They weren't paid to use it. Uh, so there are a lot of disincentives built into it. But not only that, they were having reports rejected on a regular basis for no good reason that they could see. So the reliability of the whole system is, is extremely dubious. Which, of course, would mean that, if anything, it would be reasonable to assume that the amount of adverse reactions, which we know are occurring to mRNA vaccines, is, is underreported, if anything, in Canada. Vastly underreported, and it may even be worse than in other countries. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So th 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 this uh, rep report, wh wh what are you hoping it will achieve, Chess? And how do people get involved in this? 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I may have mentioned, we're uh, completely a volunteer organization. We're also volunteer funded, citizen funded. So uh, folks can certainly go to nationalcitizensinquiry.ca and if you put in commissioner's report, you will see the commissioner's report. You will see, for example, my letter to the Prime Minister, Mr. Trudeau, in which I condense all this and spell it out, that this is a problem and Canadians are being misled and asking him what's he going to do about it. Now, the, habitually, officials at every level, including politicians throughout this COVID crisis, um, have responded to inquiries, criticism and the like by ignoring it. So I'm not really expecting an answer. But at least this is now on the record. And it may be that the opposition party here uh, will uh, eventually get around to asking some questions about this. That would be very nice. Uh, if they would um, put the government on the spot about this issue. There is a misrepresentation apparently on Health Canada's website about the safety status of the vaccines, that they are proven safe and effective. But this did not happen, and it still has not happened. And in fact, we have the letter here that's on your website, and, and as you rightly say, it's to... Uh... Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, let's hope he uh, responds to this letter. Now, in the U in the UK, there are certain well, the, the, there's you can count probably on the fingers of one hand MPs who are questioning the, uh, the the current strategy that we're going down as regards vaccination and COVID. We've interviewed people like Senator Rennick uh, in uh, in Australia and uh, Senator Babette and other senators that are raising issues. Do, do you have any... These people that are raising issues are somewhat being branded as um, uh, as uh, renegades or conspiracy theorists, people that are actually honestly trying to represent their constituents. Um, have you got any people, individuals, speaking up in the Canadian uh, gov government about this? Uh, John, perhaps not quite so much as other places, but um, you know there are folks who have been in elected life who are, are obtaining nominations to run in the next general election. Uh, and I might mention that the Conservative Party of Canada, which is the official opposition, and riding high in the polling, uh, seemingly likely to form the next government, uh, there were two resolutions passed at the policy convention last weekend. One had to do with affirming the right to informed consent and bodily autonomy, which you might not think would be a controversial thing uh, since it's basic law as established by the Supreme Court of Canada. Uh, but in these troubled times, we've seen that you know things we took for granted have been uh, under attack. Anyway, that was affirmed by the opposition party in its recent policy convention and as well the right to refuse a vaccine, which uh, is getting a bit more specific, but that was affirmed by uh, two-thirds to one-third. And so, uh, the you know, if a government is formed by Mr. Poiliev, who's the leader of the opposition, these are things that they must take account of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the kind of philosophy in, in Canada at the moment? Are st people still being encouraged to take vaccines? Are they being um, threatened with sanctions if they don't? Does it depend on their employment? Um, are there some jobs still conditional on, on, on vaccination? Uh, I can't st answer for all jobs. Uh, the, there's still a lot of uh, what you could call, I guess, uh, no question, discrimination going on. People who are injured by losing their jobs and so forth, their legal actions proceeding, their all manner, uh, you know, those injuries have not been corrected yet. Uh, uh, but uh, as of last year, the federal government withdrew its requirements for being vaccinated to use the airplanes within the country and uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, requirements that to be a federal employee you had to be vaccinated, those were discontinued or suspended, I should say, because they could be brought back at any time. It's not like COVID is over and done. 
COVID is still with us, even if the germ now is actually uh, very mild in most cases when people pick it up because of exposure to it already and, uh, and natural immunity and all the rest of it. Uh, but these, uh, these regulations and this discrimination and the punishment of people who chose to exercise their right of bodily and autonomy could still always be brought back. So it's very important for us to carry on, get to the truth, and uh, eventually get to the point where some kind of accountability is put in place. Mm -hmm. So given the information on the Health Canada website at the moment, do, do you feel it is now possible for people to give informed consent to the vaccine based on full and transparent knowledge? Um, no. No, because it's, it's, you know, most people place their, their faith they place their faith in the idea that the regulator is looking out for their safety and that if a regulator is approving a vaccine, then it's gone through all the required steps to make sure that it's safe for the population to take it. And when it's recommended, you should take this, that a safety calculation and a risk-benefit analysis has been carried out and is favorable. This, in fact, has not happened. So, frankly, by that fact alone, I can't see how, as a common sense proposition, uh, people are able to take the vaccines on an informed basis. How can there be informed consent when the situation is being mis misrepresented and the regulator has not determined the safety of the products? Mm -hmm. Do you feel most people in Canada still trust the regulatory authorities and the government recommendations? Uh, the exact proportions are hard to say, and for some strange reason, there's not much polling on it. Uh, but I'm going to guess that 20%, 30%, maybe even as much as 40% are ranging from plain outright don't trust the government to having significant doubts about trusting the government. And it may even be touching on 50%. So do you think this loss of trust in government in response to vaccines and their response to the COVID pandemic has caused loss of trust in government in general. Uh, if I could just maybe mention in my country, I do feel that this is the situation. Um, I certainly trust governments less than I used to. <laughs> and I think many other people in the UK do. What's the situation like in Canada? Is this a common problem? Well, John, you know, just speaking for myself, I was until recently the leader of the opposition in a Canadian province, Newfoundland and Labrador. So, you know, I went into that trusting that in a democratic, you know, liberal state like Canada, or I thought Canada was, uh, the government had your best interests in heart, even if it was often, you know, inept or incompetent in executing on that. But now I no longer think that. And if I'm no longer thinking that, uh, then I think an awful lot of other people are as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I found. People that I would consider conservative with a small c, you know, what we, what we call reasonable, re completely reasonable people in, in the UK are now much more suspicious th th than they, they were. And that, that is a, a problem. It's causing um, a, a, a sort of a, is making the nation somewhat disparate into into various categories. Really, it seems a very unfortunate side effect that the government have uh, apparently squandered a lot of their trust capital as a result of this. Yes, they they've squandered trust capital. But you know what? I'm not convinced it's a bad thing. Maybe we were too trusting, and now we're on a better state of alert. Yeah, yeah. So all we're asking for. Is, is what's on my poster behind me, follow the evidence. So to all governments, we would say, we're not quite as stupid as we look. Give us the evidence, full, free, transparent evidence, and we will make the appropriate decisions. And where regulators are making decisions on our behalf and they're giving the full information with full transparency, making all potential conflicts of interest pot potentially obvious or hopefully eliminating uh, conflicts of interest then actually we're not too unreasonable and we will go along because we do need government 
We don't want anarchy. Just give us the information. Allow us to be reasonable. Allow us to make our own decisions based on the evidence. And, and we will follow that. I think, I think that will describe the position in the United Kingdom of most reasonable people. And I suspect, is that true for Canada as well? Well, John, I endorse what you just said. Uh, I think what most people want is transparency and honesty from government. Even now, if uh, there were admissions made, admissions about mistakes being made, the, the public, the electorate, are often very forgiving of mistakes if there's a sincere apology and regret being tendered. But it seems, unfortunately, that many governments, and the one in Canada and the in the provinces included, just want to double down and triple down and keep uh, keep down a bad path. And uh, I don't think that's going to end them in a good place. So again, we appeal to governments, can we have confession and repentance where necessary and uh, re-establish trust? Because we're at the end of the day, we're actually paying these people, aren't we, Jess? At least we are in the UK quite well. I assume the same situation in Canada. We're paying them, but are we getting value for money? And in fact, are we getting their loyalty to us? And of course, we do hope they're not loyal to any other uh, agencies or uh, enterprises other than the people that elected them. So where can people uh, learn more, Chess? Can you send us some links and we'll post those links if people want to get interested, particularly Canadian citizens? Um, there's links you can supply and we'll allow people to get full information and hopefully make free and fully informed uh, decisions based on transparent data. Absolutely. And the Canadians who uh, go to these links, uh, John, I'd really encourage them to make contact with uh, their members of parliament, their members of legislatures, to talk to their friends. There are leaflets available to be printed from our website, pass them around in the neighborhood. It's time to cut through this wall of silence which much of the mainstream press and other outlets have erected and have an honest dialogue about what's gone on in the last three or more years. Yep, I recognize many of the issues that you've raised there, Chess, from my country. The, uh, the idea that only one narrative is allowed in the press, the lack of official opposition. We, we have a whole department in our parliament called His Majesty's Opposition. Why aren't they opposing the government? You know, wh why is there no honest, real debate about this? It's, um, I, I think you and me speak for a lot of disappointed citizens. Yeah, well, well, John, uh, you, we have an expression in Canada, maybe you do too, because you're a rail country. The third rail of politics, that's the high energy rail. The one you, when you touch it, you get electrocuted. And a lot of these issues, particularly around vaccines, are still high energy issues that people don't want to touch. But they are getting around to it and they will be touched. And our motivation is improving human well-being, avoiding pain, suffering and death for the people that we come in contact with uh, every day. And uh, I'm, I'm convinced that's your motivation as well, Jess. And, um, let people read this report with, with interest. And of course, we will uh, have you back on in a shot if we do hear from, um, who was it again? Are uh, uh, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau. That, that was it. Yeah, if we hear back from him, we'll... Um... Yes, uh, if, if I get a letter from him, I'll be, you'll be the first to know. Yeah. After this, he could be on the phone tonight. You just give us a call, let us know, and we'll, 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 we'll update uh, the population of Canada and other citizens around, citizens around the world uh, forthwith. For, 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 Thanks for your kind interest, John. For now, Chess, th thank you very much for coming on.